right, now we're ready. I can see you taking it all in. Yeah, you, you gave me a <laughs> notepad. I, I don't think I've ever been given a notepad for a podcast before. Yeah, I like having one because sometimes I'll think of things and I just give one to the... No guest has ever used it. I think Maddie Chimber drew a dick and balls one time and uh, showed it to the camera, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, if I think of something funny, I'm just going to say it. I'm not yeah, going to write yeah, yeah. it down and like, I'm going to double back on this. Oh, but, yeah, I think for me, it's not about jokes. It's just about like, oh, yeah, I wanted to ask Dave about this one thing. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I don't want to interrupt the current flow. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that makes sense for you to have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I don't know if I have any questions. It would be funny if you had like, after the pod, you had all these like jokes written out, like yeah. a whole set. Uh, but, well, then you'd be like, you got to book me again. That'd yeah, yeah. Be a real... Okay. Yeah. So uh, I just recently did your amazing show, The Blind Barber. Yes, The Blind Barber in yeah. Culver City. Thanks for having me. It was so much fun. Well, thanks for coming by. Uh, we've been doing the show seven years now. Yeah. And we have a, we started a Highland Park branch. Mm-hmm. They have a blind barber over there. Yeah. And uh, in February, yeah, February will be our seventh anniversary of the Culver City one. And then the Highland Park one's been going... Maybe nine months now. Yeah, that's great. And there's one in New York. I don't know if it's affiliated with you, but there is one there now. There, There is a blind barber there. I don't know if there's a show at it. There is a show now. Okay, well, that's new to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hope the show is good. Right. Uh, you know, we kind of we kind of want it to be a part of uh, any of the stuff, you know? But, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just so much work, you know? I mean, we made sure that we got we got a show started at the Highland Park one because we, right. didn't, we didn't want that to... Uh, you don't want someone taking over and the brand suffers. They, they do a whack show and then you don't right. understand. Because it is, you know, it's not like other places where uh, it's like the back room of a bar and people are running shows there constantly. I yeah. mean, it's a special event. We take over the bar for a night. Right. Regular people can't come. Right. Oh, so, the regular people can't come. I mean... You got to be on the list to come to the oh, show. Oh, okay. So no bar patrons. Everyone's no, there for yeah, the we show. We turn people away. Oh, that's that's why everyone was so focused. Because I was impressed. I was like, wow, even the people who weren't in the seats at the bar were paying attention. Yeah, oh. that, that was our initial. When we we went there uh, when I first moved to town. Yeah. Uh, Nick Anthony, one of the guys, he wasn't there. This and Grant Lyon. Yeah. And they lived in the neighborhood, like. Palms, Culver City. Yeah. And they took me out drinking, and we ended up there. And we got there, we had one drink, and they go, it's last call. Yeah. And we're like, oh, shit. And they're like, if you guys want to stay, there was like 12 people. Mm-hmm. You got to play musical chairs. Right. And I was like, what? And Nick was so competitive. He's like, yeah. And he's like knocking people over and it's nonsense. And then we, we were just sitting there after the musical chairs. Who I think Nick won. And... uh they looked at us and they go, you guys look like writers, which yeah, I, yeah. I've learned now is an insult. But I was new to town. <laughs> Everything was exciting to me. Right. And uh, we're like, now we're comedians. And they're like, boy, we'd love to start a comedy show here. Yeah. And then we we were like, all right. We set up a meeting with them and we told them, right. you know, if we were to do a show here, we can't have people that are just wandering in. It'll be terrible. We've right. all done shows like that. Yeah, yeah. It's a fucking it's a shit show. Yeah. So they they agreed to that, but that put the pressure on us because right. it is a popular bar, and to be like, hey, you're gonna shut it down for two hours, right? At that point, it was only when we first started, it was just two hours for the show, yeah, and then yeah. it reopened in the public, yeah. So we had a lot of pressure to like fill the space, right? And then you know we did the first one, and then you know we got emails, and then they you know now we we I think we got a paid the MailChimp. I don't know. Oh, he, the MailChimp. Yeah. Are you yeah. you're past the threshold where you yeah, get free? Yeah, the MailChimp gets angry and <laughs> starts throwing bananas. At yeah, they do. So, yeah. So yeah. The email is key to running a great show. It's like that's how you get people to actually click through. Like a post on Instagram, I think it's okay, but mostly it doesn't convert. It's just kind of like showing people right. what you're doing. Now, my friend Shane Moss, he does uh, a bunch of independent tours. He's yeah. very funny. He does uh, a lot of Facebook and, and Instagram ads. Yeah. You know, but they're specifically targeted to people that are into like, for a while he had a show about psychedelics. Yeah, yeah. So it was like psychedelics, or and now it's like science and comedy. Mm-hmm. So it's very targeted. 
Right. And he has a very cool poster. You know, I, he does spend a lot of money. Yeah. But he gets it back in return. Right. You know? Yeah. You, you got to spend money to make money, promote it, sell more tickets. It doesn't yeah. take much in ticket sales to recoup your ad. Right. So, you know, also you learn how to do that. Like every once in a while, like the Highland Park one, we ran some ads yeah. to, just to get get it going. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And, you know, I don't know. Like I couldn't. You know, we run the and you see more people. Now I couldn't tell if they were coming right. in because I put the email address in the ad. I couldn't tell if they were coming in from there or right, whatever. Right. But we also so they're coming in from somewhere and it just raises brand awareness among yeah. comedians or whatever. Even it's just like Yeah. It's like when you see an ad for Intel, like no one goes out and buys an Intel chip from a store, but it right. raises the brand awareness as part of their company. So that was a weird analogy, but yeah, yeah. I mean, we do it too for Comedy Bunker. We'll do an ad once in a while, and sometimes like, was it the ad, or like the ad did nothing, or sometimes I have no ad and it's packed, or sometimes it's a little light and it did an ad. You never really know a hundred percent. But you know, when I go to people's shows and there's nobody there, I'm like, you know, because there's all sorts of free stuff, even if you don't want to run an ad. Yeah, because like every once in a while, like. Every once in a while, depending on the time of year, they'll be like, I mean, the show always sells out, but sometimes we get put out the list and it's like at right. 80 or 75. And you're yeah, like, oh yeah, boy. Yeah. So then we we go post it on a bunch of event blogs, you know, those are yeah. all free. How much, How what's the capacity? I don't know. It's probably like a hundred, a little okay. bit over a hundred. So when you saw it was 70, 80, you're like, all right, we got to push to get the last 20 in. We, we always want the list to be over 100 because yeah. uh, people flake. Right. So there's like just the way like an airline oversells a, a yeah. plane. You right, know? right. And just like like I work at the comedy store now. Yeah, you do. The show says it's sold out. Yeah. But if you really want to go, you should just go. There's a chance people aren't going to show up. There's right. a percentage of people that don't show up every right. day. Right. So, you know. You know, you better be the first couple people in the standby line if you're going to the comedy store. Yeah, yeah. If you're like the last person, you might not get in. But right. But there's always a percentage of people that just flake. Yeah. We had a, like a special event uh, where Maddie Chimber did an hour with Mark Normand, and we wanted it to be like packed out. And we the capacity is like 55, but we had 70 RSVPs. And I was like, that's about perfect. Because like, lo and behold, like 15 people flaked like last yeah. minute. Even when like you send a blast saying, don't flake, yeah. please let us know. It's 15 people flake. And then it ended up being perfect sweet spot for a great show. Yeah, like uh, Grant usually handles the emails, but every once in a while I'll do them like on Monday. Like the Monday we send out a reconfirmation thing. Yeah. And people will, you know, cancel or or they'll message in that day and be like, is there any way I can get in today? You're like, yeah. yeah. And then those people don't show Right, up. right. I'm like, all right, you know, there's just no yeah, way to tell it. Exactly. Uh, we should do operate like 80%. We're like, if we have 80% of what is RSVP'd, we'll come. Yeah. And it, sometimes we just say, like, look, standing room only if you show up late or if like you haven't RSVP'd. Yeah. We'll, I mean, we'll do our best to get you in, but we can't guarantee. Yeah. I mean, there's been times where, you know, nobody flakes and all of a sudden it's like crazy packed. There's like a certain number in there where I feel like there's a diminishing return on the show. Absolutely. The show gets worse. Because there's too many people standing. When people are standing, they're more likely to talk. They're yeah, unblocking yeah. other people's views that are sitting. Right. So makes it easier to talk. Yeah. 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 So you know the, the magic number in my mind is probably like ninety. Ninety. Yeah. Yeah. But it's hard to get there. You know. Totally. You were a great host too. Like you definitely put the show first as a host. Yeah. Which I thought is like it's great. That's what makes a good show too. Is where the host is like I'm here to make sure the show is great. First and foremost. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I always, I hate hosting, but I'm trying to get better at it. You yeah, know? yeah. It's uh, not ideal, but if 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 you are out there starting a show, I think my initial point was there's like maybe forty or fifty free places to post your show. Yeah. Like, and I, it works. Like, I don't. A, I'm. I actually never do that. What are some of the free places? Well, like Yelp. Oh, really? Yelp. You, you can put events on Yelp. Oh. And like, say you put it on like 20 or 30 different event things. Yeah. You know, Eventbrite or whatever. Yeah. And you get like two or three from each of those. Yeah. Like, especially if you're a new show. If you get right. two or three from like, you post it on 10 or 15 different 
blogs yeah and you get a couple people from each show all of a sudden now you got 30 people at your show right you know it works it works yeah i when i had a light attendance like we do 55 60 and the day before it was 17 and i was like oh this has never happened so like i went and printed flyers with a qr code and i was running around town to like coffee shops and like leaving them places and we ended up getting to 60 i don't know if it was just last minute or that but i was like we're making this happen like the show must go on and it's got to be great like i'm not just going to be like oh sorry there's five people here and it doesn't hurt, like, for our show, every once in a while to put it on some of these things, yeah. even though it is exclusive, just to get some fresh emails. You yeah. Know, people move on, all yeah. that stuff. Because for a show to stay the same attendance, the list has to grow. Right. You can't just say, like, oh, I have my my people now because people die. They don't want to come anymore. Things yeah. happen. I mean, you were there. You heard how many people. There was, I would say, like, 40% of the audience it was their first time. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes it for me, I'm like, because I really want to lean in and be me. Yeah. And it's easier if everybody in the audience right, has right. been there. Right. 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 Yeah. It's like you're seeing your friend again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when I'm like, oh, I got to reintroduce, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, fuck. Yeah. I like the shot you did. You When you <laughs> yeah. brought the shot on stage, you did a shot. That really, everyone's like, yeah. They start to like know you better. and Right. Well, it, it comes from like the, the bar being so crowded that it's yeah. the easiest way to order a drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, it's uh, it's about drinking and it's about the show. So that's great. Yeah. And you're at the comedy store now? Yeah, I work there as a door guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, if you don't mind me asking, is an interesting transition because you're also a comedy veteran. You're not new to the game. I remember I was at Heckler's recently and I saw you or poster there as a headliner in yeah. Victoria. And so you are also a headliner. Do you want to walk us through like what your thinking process was there? I just was tired of like really tracking down work at these clubs that yeah it just be, it's like you got to send all these emails to right. get a week and then you get there and it's like uh, the week's okay you know yeah. what i mean and like you're like what am i doing this for you right know? uh you know because i've been doing it i didn't have a job for like 10 years so yeah. i was like doing the road all the time and yeah, yeah. that was like my w way i made money but you know, unless you have a draw or any sort of niche, you're just kind of performing for people that are going to see comedy at a comedy club and you're right. at the mercy of the club and whatever's going on in town that week. Yeah, you mean for the road shows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, I was really just, I'm really like working so hard to go to a place. Mm -hmm. When I get to the place, they're like, meh. You know right. what I mean? And I'm like, boy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, you know, a long time, the road was a lot of fun, you know, it was an adventure. Right. But then it stopped being, you know, it was fun and, uh, and I didn't feel like it was helping me as a comedian. I wasn't growing anymore yeah. and it was becoming harder to make money that way because, yeah. you know, that the agents, you know, I don't have an agent and they even like the agents used to not fuck with like the smaller independent clubs, but now I, right. Now I, I can tell I can go look at a rost, roster on like a website and be yeah. like agents and managers have gotten their hooks into this club that I didn't think they were to fuck with because they don't they only pay like a thousand bucks. I mean maybe they're playing those people a little bit more, right? But they're not paying them that much more because I know how much that club makes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Maybe they're just getting in there so they can start prepping their guys for when they go. Yeah, I get guys. it. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. once they do that, the reason they get in those smaller clubs is because they're like, oh, we're going to get you a so-and-so. Yeah. Hey, take a risk on this person. Right, right. One, do one for me, I'll do one for you, yeah. Yeah, and we're like, do three for us, and maybe, yeah. we'll, maybe, maybe you'll get yeah. Maybe you get this. <laughs> right, yeah. You know? But so then that boxes out the weeks for like the independent comedians and shit like that. Right. Well, the game has kind of changed because like – it's become like national names. Like people don't go to the clubs as much, it seems, because they they have a national access to all the comedians who are on Netflix. So they know who they want to see probably more than they used to be 10 years ago. Yeah, probably. I think it was super smart for you to do the comedy store because one of the best clubs, like one, number one, two, or three club in the world, maybe number one always. It's hard to know. And you get spots there, which is like the hardest club to get into. And you're part of the network. Yeah, I mean, it was also like, I wanted to get my name on the wall and it's like, yeah. would I, did I have it in me to go and do like what I, I don't, you know, 
like yeah. I, the process is very mystifying, even yeah, now yeah. that I work there. <laughs> But I figured if I worked there, they would have to look at me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, around and yeah. Yeah, I'm around. Yeah. I mean, people like, you know, hanging out and doing shows with people they like and who are also funnies. And you're already both those things. And now you're in the mix and you can see how the sausage is made, so to speak, you know? Yeah. And I'm getting stage time there. Yeah. You know, a lot of people in LA are like, oh, I'm only getting a couple of spots a month or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But if I play it right at the comedy store and I have spots on my off nights, yeah, then I'm getting up like five times a week. Yeah, which in LA is great. And for somebody that's been doing it as long as I have, yeah. that's that's enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, right. You know, you see those guys that have like made it. Like Bill Burr isn't going out every night. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he's he going can, out quite often. I mean, you see him; he's dropping in a lot. Yeah, yeah. But he's not he's not going out seven nights a week. Like right, seven sets a night. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, probably, yeah. He's doing a couple here. That, you know? Yeah. Ivan Decker and I talked about that. At a certain point, there's <coughs> diminishing returns. Like at first, you're like, any stage time is good stage time because you're learning yourself. You're just learning how to move and be, do it, and go through your material. But then, if you're not going and doing your set with a specific purpose, you start to kind of waste those opportunities. And if you're not like leaving, he said he likes to leave the house with his set already list already done, ready to go. He knows what he's doing before he gets there, and he feels like for him, it's like a big difference from when he goes up, oh, what am I going to do before? Okay, I'll do these things. Yeah, but it, I feel like it hurts people's power to uh, experiment on stage when the stage time becomes so precious. Absolutely, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so I try to not make the stage time so precious, you know? right. I mean, that helps running your own show. I mean, yeah, you mean, yeah. I'm just kind of fucking around up there. Yeah, yeah. And having that freedom is good. Right. Yeah, because there's kind of this impression where in L.A., because it's a show busy town where you kind of always want to do well. Yeah, I, yeah, I get it. Yeah. But it's not helpful for you as a comedian, though. It does. It's hard for you to grow. It's yeah. hard for you to write new material. My belief is that if you're funny, you'll shine through even if you're fucking around. Like yeah, your personality. Yeah. And also, I've seen people like go up on showcase shows for the industry. Yeah, and you're like, that person fucking ate it. You know, they sucked. Yeah. And then afterwards, the industry's all like blowing them anyway. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because they have a look or whatever, they yeah. fit a certain type, and they're like, yeah. And yeah. you're like, yeah, but that was that wasn't good, right? What did you see that I didn't see? Yeah. Or maybe they saw them before. Sometimes I see like really great comedians go and do all their new stuff and like, well, because they have the confidence to play the long game and yeah. be like, yeah, I'm doing it regardless. Like, this right. is what I need to do. Like, I'm working on my act. Like, get over it. Yeah. Sometimes it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they just like bullshit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes you, you they just want the A stuff. And so I'm sure it's hard at the store too, because you're going up around the best comedians in the world. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And but you got to open a lot there. A lot yeah. of the employee spots are opening spots. So yeah. that's really forced me to learn how to like go first again, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. And you, all your friends at the store are watching you all the well, time. Well, everybody's yeah. working, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Monday night is when we kind of all watch each other. Yeah, yeah. On the uh, friends. On the event. potluck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And friends and family, yeah. And then the main room guys will see you go up in the main room. This, yeah. Because they're working in there. Right. We met at Ryan Singer's show, the one he had at that bar on, I think it was Vermont. Which bar? It was like a sports bar. It was really loud. And oh, yeah. He had pizza there. Yeah, that show keeps going. I guess it keeps changing names. Yeah, I think uh, he handed it off to somebody else. That was like the last night. Yeah. I no, think you were there, I, I Josh Adam Myers. And... I think that show's called Honeycomb now or something. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It was fun. And I, I met a bunch of people for the first time, like you and Josh. I was like, oh, you guys are hilarious. I got to have you on Comedy Bunker. And yeah. Yeah. I love Ryan. He's such a nice guy. He's a great guy. He's got really cool road stories and he's got a really like unique perspective. Like you never see anyone going up and doing Ryan or like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you were on Comedy Bunker recently. Yeah. I was yeah. on your show recently. Yeah, for the Southland Comedy Fest. I was. Yeah. Which was really cool to see because like LA didn't really have like a festival in the city. Yeah, I mean, they did a pretty good job. I mean, my opinion on festivals in big cities are, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they did a good job, yeah. and I had a good time. My argument against festivals in big cities in general, if I were to go to one. Yeah. Now, that one, for those people that came from out of town, they got to be on shows that were packed. Yeah. 
And I've been to festivals where you go and there's like 10 people and you're like, right. what the fuck is this? Yeah, I yeah. flew here and this, you know? Right. So everybody got to do shows that were packed and yeah. there was showbiz people in the crowd. So, and there was parties. So they got some value out of it mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. The problem with festivals in big towns as opposed to like a s smaller city or even a city like Atlanta is like, like I did the red clay one in October. All the shows were like on one block pretty mm. much. You know, you bounce to one show, you go watch another show and then you're walking down the street. You're like, Hey, yeah, yeah. this guy, a vibe. everybody's got their badges yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody, and then everybody stayed in the same hotel, you yeah. know, kind of like South by Southwest. Like everyone's in the same yeah. like nook, even like Montreal. It's like Montreal's not, I mean, it's a big city, but yeah. it's like all the shows are within like a certain area yeah, and yeah. everybody's in the same hotel. And yeah, you yeah. know, it's like, it for you know you just network yeah you know with here with the southland festival half the people lived here yeah so like you know i went to like two of the after parties but yeah. after you know I didn't, i'd be like i'm leaving I, I didn't like make plans for people to get lunch the next day because you know i got my own yeah. shit going on yeah and i bet you a lot of people that yeah, la yeah, yeah. people well you're already you're already here this is your home i'm sure the new york people were out or like from other towns yeah or, maybe yeah, yeah. yeah but like when i did i did years ago i did the laughing devil in new york city it was like a spinoff of the laughing skull or whatever yeah yeah and i went back for it i'd lived in new york yeah and i went back for the festival just you know there was prize money whatever and you know i went and did it but I, you know i had a good time but i also had other spots and all that. like the people that came from other places that never dealt with new york before right they do their spot and then like all the New York people be like skitter off to their other spots. And right. then they're just kind of like in New York, you know, and they're yeah, like, yeah. they're like, I get, you know, it, it, there's less, less community, less community. Yeah. 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 They built a good, like, uh, we hosted one of the after parties. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you come to that? That one? was, yeah. Cause that was in your show. Oh yeah. You were on the <laughs> show. Right. <laughs> I didn't stay in part. I stayed until like 1130. Yeah. Yeah. So because they're all, it's run by comedians too, who know the scene and know the fact that they kind of like used established shows and added like a party on top of it or like added great lineups to it. I actually didn't even know the lineup until, but I had trusted them that it was going right. to be great and they had a great lineup and it's, and then people who didn't do it were like, oh, like if I knew it was going to be great, I would have done it. And right. I was like, oh, yeah, you got, you got to take a risk sometimes. And Yeah. I thought yeah. they did a pretty good job for a first year. For, yeah. And it's uh, you can feel it's already going to come back, hopefully. Yeah. If they, if they want to do the work, I mean, I was just anxiety running one show, like all those shows and all the questions and all right, right. fielding all the stuff and making T-shirts and yeah. photos and coordinating. and. I mean, for me personally, I... You know, the smaller city festivals can be a, a lot of fun. Yeah. But, you know, I thought they did a good job for a big city one. Yeah, definitely. What other? Laughing Skull is one that I recommend to people. In yeah, Atlanta. yeah. And uh, the Big Pine one I did a couple years ago, I think they're, they're I think, yeah, one keeps growing. And right. It's a flagstaff. It's a beautiful city. What do you feel is like your next, we talk a lot about goals in comedy and like what are some of the things you want to achieve this year? And it's a way I always say a few of mine, the guest says a few of theirs, and we try to hold ourselves accountable and be like, you put it out there in the universe and it can happen. Uh, well, you know, it'd be nice to, you know, book a TV spot again of yeah. some sort or, yeah, or yeah. like a Comedy Central digital thing or, yeah. you know, just something to get back out there. Right. Uh, that'd be great. I'd, lo I'd love to book a commercial. Yeah. Because you've already had a, a couple late nights? I, I I did Fallon once. Okay. And then I did Last Comic Standing and yeah, you yeah. know some other stuff. But you know, I mean I you know I was doing for a while there it seemed like I was getting like one new credit a year. Yeah, and, and yeah. Whatever. Uh but you know, as long, as long as I get something, I it's easier to keep to justify in the train. Uh, going <laughs> <laughs> little little victories well yeah you're like you know you're not delusional you know <laughs> right yeah i think i guess you need a little bit of delusion or you, no one's it would start yeah you gotta have a certain level of delusion yeah, yeah. but you know at some point you're like well i need some money <laughs> right right yeah that's how all, all of show business is now like winner take all it's like musicians used to be able to make a cd 
on their own, sell 10,000 copies. That's like a hundred grand. Yeah. You can do that from your trunk, use that money, do another album. Now it's like you put a album up on Spotify. If you get a million streams, which is like everyone's high fiving, that's only five grand. Uh, so br- it's like, it's really changed. That's brutal. Yeah. And I'm, it, so all the arts are like nothing, nothing, nothing. And then you make it and you get everything. It's just like everything else. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, everything's been hollowed out in the middle class in a way. Right. It's like, yeah, people are like, you go into like top schools, Ivy League, making tons of money, or you're in the lower income, just barely making it in expensive cities. Right. You know, like LA, New York. I lived in New York 2003 to 2006, and probably like the last generation you could really live in Manhattan for like a thousand bucks. Yeah, I don't know how anybody lives there and does the arts, you know? Yeah. I mean, people tell me what they pay, you know, it's like, at some point, you know, I mean, I think people that are like artist artists have kind of already fled New York, right? Yeah, some yeah. Of, they've went to other places. Yeah, well, I mean, there was a Brooklyn exodus, and then Brooklyn got super expensive, and then Berlin was really cheap for a while. Like Berlin kind of became the new New York, and now Berlin's expensive. So, yeah. and then you just move to Mars, and then that's it, <laughs> <Yeah>. and uh, <laughs> start an artist colony there, and uh, it'll be okay. A little hot, but but yeah. I mean, there's more ways for people to make money than before yeah you know with the internet and stuff like that for comedians and stuff like that with the podcast and videos and you can control your own destiny like you can make your pod look at schultz i mean you do your own videos you do your own stuff and if you're good and you can build your own fan base you control it all right you know i mean there's something to be said that it that favors the marketer and the salesman over the artist yeah you know there's people i see and I go, well, this person would be successful in anything. Yeah. You know? Right. Like comedy, business, whatever. And then I'm like, why'd you choose this one? You know? Why'd you choose comedy to be successful in? Because I can see it on stage. I, I'm like, this person isn't uh, funny. Yeah. But they know the tricks. They know all the the notes to play. Oh, like they know, like they know how to format a joke, but they're not like. And they're like charismatic, right? But I'm like, this guy could be a politician or this gal or yeah, whatever, yeah. or they could go sell cars or. Right. Why would you choose to do this one? I don't, you know. Yeah, I think people choose. Why do the choice of career can be like some small thing, like right. one moment? You're like. Or like you declare your major, yeah, I'll do political science. Or right. And then you're like, all of a sudden, three years later, you're in this field. You're like, oh, shit, that one decision was like super important. Or I'll try comedy or I'll do music. Right. It's like, then 10 years can go by and you're like, oh, wow, that that like small decision that I made kind of quickly really changed my life. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's somebody that finds selling oneself kind of gross, Yeah. Uh, you know. I, I don't know. I guess those people... Yeah. I don't even like putting myself on my own flyer for like the first right. eight months of the show. People are like, why aren't you putting yourself on the flyer? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, you got to do that. I, I value like being funny over uh, a lot of stuff, you know, probably to the detriment of my own success. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a balance. Like if you're like 80% focused on that and 20% um, the marketing... Yeah, I mean, Norman and I think it was Bar- uh, Mark Norman and Burt Kreischer were talking about that. It's like if you just take it from 100% funny, which is like a lot of guys in New York are focused on the jokes, the jokes, the jokes, and just add 20% marketing, and like it really makes a difference. And like you can live and have a good career and right. have a great podcast and stuff and still focus and be funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I, I, I thought, yeah. Well, if you got any tips for me, that'd be great. For you? <laughs> yeah, in terms of that. Um, what are your main comedy like angles? So like, you have the show you run. Yeah. You're at the store, which is, like, I mean, yeah. you know, how many people would kill to do that? Right. And you're not going to be there forever. Yeah. So you'll kind of go through that rung, get your name on the wall, and then ostensibly go back to doing some headlining shows on the road, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously I would like to build an audience now, yeah. I guess... The main way is like a podcast or something yeah. like that. You know, I've had podcasts in the before that just didn't take off, yeah. you know, and then then it hurt 
I don't know. It hurts my feelings. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? When yeah, you yeah. put something out there and it does it. Because, yeah, I, I mean, I, when I put stuff out there, I, I put it out there because I think it's funny and I enjoy doing it. Yeah. And you think it's going to resonate with people and it doesn't. Yeah. And you're like, it's not like a calculated thing to be like, this is going to grow my fan base or whatever. Right. This is just like an extension of what I think is funny. And yeah, yeah. I want people to be a part of And when it doesn't resonate. Yeah. You know, it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the it changed from like putting something out. So I, I can't talk today. It changed from putting something out and it pops to like putting something out consistently yeah. and then people end up finding you and then it slowly, slowly builds. Right. And so that's like going viral, like putting a clip up and going viral. Well, yeah, but I had like a podcast that was like going for like a year and yeah. like it just stayed at the same number. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was like, Ugh. <laughs> What was the podcast about? It was about... Well, it didn't have a theme. That was probably part of the problem. Yeah. It was called The Riff Board. I did it with uh, Shane Moss, the guy. Okay. Uh, he had a, he's got a very popular science podcast. Like, it's in the top 100 under science and yeah. shit. Or it's been in the top 100 in comedy. Yeah. So I thought just him being the co-host, yeah. we would get some spillage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But his podcast is so, like, science and, like, and this podcast was like a celebration of immaturity. Right. Because we lived together and we would just like make up characters and fuck around. And yeah. It was called the riff board. And we would just, he, he would like, because we lived together, he would be like, man, you're you're just saying some of the funny, he'd be like, are you going to put that in your act? And it was yeah. just like something I'd just say in the house. So, right. So he just started writing that stuff down. Yeah. Like on a, like on a yellow notepad like you. Yeah, yeah. And then we'd, We'd hit record and he'd be like, All right, what about when you said this? And then we could just kind of go. <laughs> right. on. You're telling your stories back to each other. Yeah. Maybe you should bring it back. Well, yeah, but he doesn't live here anymore. Ah, He's like shoot. on the road. Replace That's what... him. Yeah. <laughs> it was just the ma- you know, there's some magic you have yeah, with some yeah, people. I know. That shoot. was a lot of fun. Yeah. The, my favorite part of the podcast that is that he he was the host of the podcast. And then there was always a special guest. Yeah. And the special guest was always me. <laughs> <laughs> was he always introducing you as you? Yeah, well, he'd always say a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And I'd be like, ooh, who's it going to be? And I'd like guess. I I would think it was maybe James Vanderbeek oh, or, yeah, yeah. or John Malkovich or, <laughs> or somebody. <laughs> and I'd always act surprised that I was the special yeah. guest. Yeah. I mean, I I struggled with this podcast for a while. Like, I recorded a bunch of episodes, and I'm like, I don't need to do it. Why am I doing it? Then I was like, oh, no, I should do it. Then I just one day was like, I'm putting it out audio only and then i'm like i should add video and i just kind of keep building it and sometimes i look at the podcast where it's just two people the same guests all the time and like oh that could be a better audience building podcast because the audience gets to know you through this i mean they don't get to know me as much i'm mostly talking to guests and we're having interesting conversations but uh there seems to be like no one right way to do it you just got to do and adjust as you go even like i was on ramin nazar's podcast yesterday and we were talking about like uh somehow facebook came up and like the name of my podcast is it's show business yeah and there was that part in the movie uh, the facebook movie where like justin timberlake goes like oh it should be facebook not the facebook and they're like oh yeah so i'm sure like my name I'm like why did i call it it's show business and i have this it's in front of it so i'm gonna have to fix that and like you're just constantly like iterating and i caught some of rogan's old ones because i was looking up the one he did with Anthony Bourdain after he died. And you're like, wow, like he's changed it a lot and, you know, made it better. And it used to be kind of like a split screen thing with him and a host, uh, maybe Sam Tripoli, I think, or something. And uh, yeah, you just got to keep building and things change and, you know, and it's also like, there's so many podcasts. So. Yeah. I mean, that's why like I started making videos on Instagram. Cause I was like, maybe I don't want to do a podcast. Maybe yeah. I just do that. And then, you know, I had, I, you know, I do videos on there still. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, I found it something I, I enjoy and, uh, yeah, you got to enjoy it. Cause if it's a slog, it's like, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, cause I do this thing where I go to art museums and make fun of the art. Yeah. It's called Dave on art. I do that on Instagram. Sometimes. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. I'll check it out. And then sometimes I do like advice questions on Instagram and you know, yeah. 
I was trying to do that thing where you just, I'm like, well, if you put out, st- you know, it'll grow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I was, every once in a while I would grow stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, you know, it's so, I, I made a problem. I was like, I was like, man, the next time there's a social media thing, <laughs> I want to be ahead of the curve. Yeah. And I'm going to really f- try to focus on like mastering this thing. Yeah. And then it ended up being Instagram, which something I had on my phone for, since two. I I went back and looked. My first picture on Instagram is from two thousand and ten. Oh wow, you were early. Yeah, I was <laughs> early, but I did, it was just picture. Like yeah. I didn't, you know, it was I just a, a square photo. I yeah. didn't know to like try to grow it back then. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could because it on... didn't really take off. It was just like ah, Instagram, and it was just like yeah. kind of there. Right. Twitter was still way bigger at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, now that's done. Yeah, I mean, Twitter's like 10, 20% of the people use Twitter or something like that, or what? Yeah, it just doesn't have the impact or like the. Yeah. It used to have. It doesn't make anybody's career. But. And also, it became too like you can one tweet and destroy your career. Like yeah. it used to be kind of like a wasteland. Oh, no one's going to check this. And you just right. tweet weird stuff. And then people started like pulling up and recording them all. And you're like, oh, wow, you could pull up a tweet from five years ago and your career could be done. Yeah. So that's not fun. That Let's is just not... take a photo of food. You know, that's way funner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you well, can get yeah. on TikTok with those videos. It's not too late. Yeah. Well, TikTok, the Chinese or something. Uh, aren't they behind that? I think so. They said they won't let the U.S. military guys be on TikTok because oh, of their security <laughs> concerns. Yeah. But, I mean, for you, like, your video is already public. I mean, yeah, the Chinese I, military could find them. I guess if the Chinese military wanted to come get me, they probably could. Yeah, they probably have a drone on you right now. <laughs> <laughs> they saw your art videos. Like, this guy's a threat. <laughs> but the TikTok was cool because they took what Instagram was, the video, and just made it, like, flipping through TV. You're like, oh, channel, no, this is, we. oh, I watched that. Da, 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 da. It yeah. kind of got that like remote click thing back for us. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of miss that. I mean, you're like, oh, what am I going to watch? I don't know. I feel like TikTok's just a bunch of jack-offs dancing, right? A bunch of people dancing, lip syncing. Oh, I haven't actually spent a lot of time on it, but I did mostly. Oh, it started as musically, though. Yeah. It started as a, that music video dance thing. Right. Yeah. That's what made Old Town Road become like a huge thing. Right. That was yeah. the origin story of that. Yeah. That's the, like, and it's the number one, has the most weeks at number one of any song ever. Really? It's crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. Yeah. The music's truly really changed because it used to be all about like hit records. And then you have someone like Billie Eilish come out, which is like not music that's traditionally like hit formatted or whatever. Right. And, you know, because she's got an audience and fans, like it becomes like the biggest thing ever. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Grammys had the lowest ratings since 2008, though. Yeah, I mean... I don't think people care. I think... I don't know, people got hip to... I don't know why it took people a long time to get hip to the Grammys being bullshit. <laughs> but I knew, like... Even when, like, we're with, like, uh, alternative rock was huge and all yeah. that stuff, like, the artist I like would be like, this is fucking whack. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> like, Pearl Jam and all that. Yeah, like, I think Jay-Z of... didn't accept his award one time because it wasn't on TV. And then you go back and look at, like, a band like Led Zeppelin, I think only won one Grammy ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay, what yeah. the fuck? Or Quentin Tarantino hasn't won an Oscar yet. Right. Yeah. And, like, yeah, the Grammys are, like, it's, like, almost antithetical to the rock star yeah sort of it's very geared towards pop stars that behave yeah it's weird it oscillates because sometimes it's like lauren hill wins like 12 grammys and then it goes to like super pop and then it oscillates back in the fourth i think kanye has like some of them like of the people who've won the most grammys because he's also a producer and been on other people's records as a writer and stuff like he has like i think he's in the top five for most grammys ever really i think it's like Elvis, Paul McCartney, and him are like in the top three, which is crazy. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I don't know why, I, but I used to like love the Grammys when I was like, you know, oh yeah, I, I was like music, great, you know, you got yeah. to see music on regular TV. And- yeah, I miss when they took away all the technical awards because <laughs> it just became like best record performance. 
best album performance. It used to be like the guy who mixed it. I mean, I'm biased because yeah, I'm an you're biased. Nobody wanted to see that. <laughs> oh, shit, come on, man. <laughs> Don't, I like even the Oscars, like oh, best uh, like light mixer or whatever. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> why, that's why this show's three hours long. <laughs> Okay. All right. So the people don't want to see it. Yeah. I know it's a, it's time for the nerds to shine and be like, yeah. All right, I made this. You're this like, guy's been in a black box his whole life. He's never seen the light of day. He's never had a tan. And this is the time to stand in front of the audience and say a few awkward words. Yeah. You're taking that away from him. Yes. <laughs> Get back in your box. Yeah. Mix that record. That's kind of why I got out of it because he ended up kind of just being like a butler like do this like turn this up blah 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 and also like I used to work in the studios with like the big mixing board and the band and you'd get like a, a vibe and like you'd be together for nine months yeah. and then it turned into like oh one song here just do this on your laptop email yeah. it and it just became less fun you know do a lot of bands now just like record in their own space and stuff like that? Or? Yeah, I think until they get to a certain level. You can do it all, all on your own. And the industry now rewards people who are, do everything themselves. So if you can write, produce, work the computer, just like comedy. Like if you can edit, clip, be funny, write. If you do all that stuff, you have an advantage. Right. And same with music. Like if you show up and you're like, oh, who produced this? Oh, I produced it. Oh, who wrote it? Oh, I wrote it. Who mixed it? I mixed it. Like, oh, you just all yourself? It's like exciting. Yeah. And if you're young too, it's like, oh, right. Billie Eilish, let's do it. She did the whole record in her house or something. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I've I recently learned how to edit. Um, on the last pod, DJ Dimmers, he was like, oh, uh, I didn't know you do video. I was like, oh, well, it's on YouTube. He's like, well, how come you don't post video clips on your Instagram? I was like, I don't know. And so I was like, I edited a little clip together. I'm like, yeah, you just forget there's so much editing and things to do, you forget, or it's like one person can't do it all. Yeah. I need like a I need like a video guy. I love it. <laughs> but I it's uh it's pretty cool. Like have you ever done multicam editing? No. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like you just loaded all the three cams into the software and you yeah. press like one, two, three. You just watch and go one, two, three, one, two, three. And you're like, oh, this is oh, so easy. But how is it hard to sync them all up? No, it syncs it up all for you. It does? And you just press play and go tick, 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 tick. How does it know to sync it all up? It syncs it up from the audio. So like it'll analyze the three clips. Oh, yeah? It'll find like the peaks and line it all up for you. And you just watch. Man, that's yeah. some high-powered equipment. No, it's just the basic stuff. It all does it. But you, does your computer like want to crash? Is, is I did not- have to invest in a new... My computer was 10 years old and I finally like I had to upgrade because it was taking like... I think four hours a clip to process. Yeah, that's what I meant when I said high power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have like a Mac that's in the last three years, you're fine. Yeah. But like mine was from 2011, and I was like, this is not. So then you just go boop, boop, boop. Yeah, it's kind of fun. You're like, oh, I, I get why people have this job in the black box, just editing. You're like, the yeah. captioning stuff is painful, like lining up the clips and like. Yeah. yeah. I did that for the first time, and I was like, oh, okay, well, it's a lot. You could probably go on like that website Fiverr and there's people you can pay to do it for pretty cheap. Yeah, there's a place called Rev that'll do like I think a dollar a minute or something. Yeah. 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 But oh, it's also like there's power in knowing the tools because then you know what you need to outsource. <laughs> right. You know? That. <laughs> <laughs> right. All of that that basic editing stuff. Without the editing, I just mean the fucking captioning. The captioning, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you captioned and posted any clips? No, I use this app. Uh, called clips that okay. will do it like that's what, oh, i've I, heard of that yeah when i do like you got to record in it that's so when i record those videos like dave on art or like yeah, yeah yeah dear dave video, like they do that the captioning okay. sometimes the words get fucked up i try to fix it clips it, yeah. yeah uh i haven't captioned my comedy clips i don't know i <laughs> i should I yeah, see, yeah you see like, everyone doing it i see everyone doing it and i'm like i don't know <laughs> I'm going to start by captioning the podcast stuff and doing that, and then we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it does seem to work. Schultz did say something that was interesting. It's like, well, if you're starting out and you're, how do you expect someone just to watch an hour of you? Like, give them three minutes so they can be like, hey, do you want to go see this guy and show it to his friend? Like, this guy's funny. Like, show you can be funny in three minutes and then, like, earn the right from the audience to do an hour. I was like, there's something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably- I mean, we're kind of raising the old school generation where it's like you make an album that's like polished product and you put it out. And like that's kind of like that's completely antithetical to what's going on now. Now it's like just put out as much crap as you can. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not necessarily good or bad. It's just different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. And I don't think everyone has to caption or do it one way yeah. or, or not, or just abandon the album or abandon the tight special. Like, do what makes you feel good. Yeah. I mean, it would, Making more money would feel good at this point. <laughs> yeah. I, it fucks me, you know, because people are always like, "Man, you're so funny." And yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. No, you think Grays are happened for you, and then I'm like, "All right." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, well, you start to not believe it, or you believe it, and you're like, "Boy, what's going on?" And, yeah. And, uh, uh, a lot of now, I I just really w- worry about what I can control. Yeah. And worry about. Uh, not worry about, but just try to be grateful and and enjoy where I'm at. Right. Instead of be like, this guy got this and that. Yeah, that's the recipe I mean, for disaster. Yeah, I've always told myself if I ever got like bitter, that's when I would quit. Yeah, yeah. I just quit. Uh, it would, yeah. I, I've been around people that are like real bitter and like can't oh, believe yeah. all this and that, and I'm like, I don't know. I mean, it's still pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That I got to do this, and I've, I've gotten more, done more stuff than most people that ever tried it have yeah. ever done. You know, when you compare yourself that way, everybody compares themselves the wrong way. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's you know, they compare it up. Right. But if you compare it at the totality, then I'm started. Then you're like, I'm now I'm in a different percentage than yeah. the large majority of people. Oh yeah, eighty percent of the people doing comedy would kill to be where you are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then they get there and they're like, I got to get here. Yeah, then, yeah. That's but then the you see, American. but I've been around people that have been at the, the, the pinnacle and they don't yeah. seem to be enjoying life. Right. And I feel like, boy, you spend a lot of time on getting there. And then you get there and you're like, I got to figure out how to enjoy life. And you're right. like, because they thought once they got to the top, that would fill whatever hole right. they had. Yeah. Like once I get this, once I get this, this, yeah, it, yeah. then it'll be, then it'll be complete. Then I'll be right. happy. And then. But you you get it, and then it's like, well, I gotta get right because there's always another level. Always, know? yeah. And then, but if you could figure out somehow to be happy or grateful along the way, that maybe once you get to the top, or even if you'd ever get, to, you know, what you're gonna be at some level, you know. Yeah. So I think people should focus on that. Totally. I mean, if you have X and you just think, oh, I'll be happy when I have two X. Yeah. That is not a recipe for having a good life. Because you'll get two X and like either like your income will grow and your expenses will grow and you'll be in the same place or you won't if you're not happy where you are, it's hard to say that if I got this special, if I got this one event, you're gonna be happy. It's it's usually not the way. Happiness comes from within, right? Right. And that's basically I mean for you, me you figure like, that part out. The comedy like being able to work at the comedy store has brought like stability to my life and yeah. And a little more freedom, actually, in the sense that I can say no to gigs I don't want to go do now. Right. And I, they're flexible enough that I can go do the gigs I want to do. Right. And enjoy it and, you know, get better as a comedian, you know. So I don't know what my point was there, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happiness. Yeah. And, yeah. And having like, you know, yeah. I'm not making it, you know. Uh, you know. Yeah. It's not fun. I mean. It's not fun to be around people who are like, "Oh, fuck that guy. He why did he get that? He's not funny." Or yeah. blah blah blah. It's I like, mean, every once in a while, dude. You know, I oh, think it's, we it's all, a good release. Yeah. Like, in, but it's like and sometimes I, there is some things that are like so mind blowing that yeah, yeah. your mind can't. Pro- you're like, what? Well, you I gotta think, be shitting me. You know, there's sometimes, a couple of friends like hanging out. Like everyone's got their own opinions, and everyone should have their own opinions. But just try to be smart. In this life, we're all constantly being recorded. You don't know what's going on. That's for sure. You know. That's the weird thing. It's like you kind of have to be on all the time. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> it's exhausting. I'm not on. I mean, I think I used to be like when I, there was like, once I kind of figured out my character, yeah, the character just kind of ate. <laughs> ate the regular version of me. <laughs> Are I, you your character right now? No, I'm like being me. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, there was like a, a good couple of years where that guy was like in charge. Like he was. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like, zip, in- zap, titties. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that guy was the guy. He was the public face of. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and now st- you're more. The stage persona was like 
And yeah, people yeah, are like, yeah. this is a, come this on. Is a <laughs> Hello, we watch. Come on. <laughs> Where's that other guy? Yeah. But that other guy, you know, the guy, the stage guy, you know, he was killing. It was like, yeah, yeah. He was like larger than life. And yeah. I was like, well, let's take this out in the world. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like the stage not. guy didn't have like the uh, social anxiety or whatever, right, right, yeah. or like feeling <laughs> awkward, or you know, he, he was just so you know, let that guy run the ship. But you know, it's a little bit much for everybody. Right, you wake up behind a dumpster, you're like, oh, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> I feel like you're you at the store. Like when I run into you there, yeah, you're, yeah. you're like more chill, Dave. Yeah. But when I like go to like a comedy festival, uh, yeah. Set, like uh, sometimes I let that guy loose yeah. and be like, ah, yeah, I'll yell networking and people. Yeah, I'm glad you're letting him loose on the pot a bit. Too. <laughs> I was waiting for him to come out. <laughs> Does that all sound crazy? <laughs> no, it doesn't. I mean, you see, there's some people definitely when they're on stage, they're like a different person. Oh yeah, yeah. And then they come off, and then they're like a real boring person. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's also like you don't want to have to be on off stage in the yeah. same way sometimes people think comedians are like oh like why aren't you being funny now and all that stuff and i know when people want me to be funny now like I, yeah i usually am like no, no. yeah it just gets more unfunny. i become i become more unfunny yeah. yeah and i become maybe kind of dickish to this because they're usually people after the show or like yeah. they want it they want something from you and you're like this isn't no yeah yeah we're done are the transactions over <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'll be happy to sit there and talk to you like yeah, a regular yeah. person and right i'll give you some of my time i don't mind yeah, yeah if you're polite and treat me well i'll treat you respect you know i'm not i'm not yeah i'm not like get away from me you right know? but when they want me to dance like a monkey for them i don't want to no, do that. No. <laughs> sometimes you make new comedian friends and then you kind of know them more as their comedian persona and then you're like okay and then they get like even with you now i'm getting to know you more as like the dave persona yeah, yeah. i mean I, I didn't really know zip zap that guy that well that well but, I uh, <laughs> does he have a name who that guy yeah, that guy yeah, it's just dave wait he's just dave wait dave wait uh, yeah dave when wait. i say my whole name and uh, okay dave the whole name when you say the whole name he it's comes, like beetlejuice <laughs> say the whole name three times so like, dave wait <laughs> dave wait dave wait all no. right dog <laughs> That I'd should be a good it. crowd work bet. <laughs> <laughs> Say my name three times, I'll come out. Shots, shots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so let's. Uh, why don't we wrap up with like one goal for this year? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow back publicly and ask you about one goal. One goal. Well, I've been really trying to quit smoking. I love that. Yeah, and I, I've, I'm down to like ten a day, and okay. from where I was at. Towards the end of the year, I mean, it was you know it was way more than that. I was like up to like a pack and a half. So, yeah. so I'm down to ten, and uh, you know I'm really trying to get down, you know, step down gradually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, how long do you think? So, what, a year from now, you think you'll be done? Yeah, I mean, I hope within the next couple months, you know. All right, forty fans. One year from now, Dave's quitting smoking. I know you probably wouldn't like it. Uh, personal or whatever, but I mean, it is a no. I love it. I mean, a lot of people have done comedy goals cause we, or like music goals, but this is. I think this is the most quitting smoking is like the one of the number one things you can do to better your life. Yeah, and it, you know, it's something I'm actively working on right now. Yeah, yeah. And like, I mean, people like probably listening that have never smoked, they would be like, "Tit," you know, you still, but like, yeah, just stop, just stop tomorrow. Yeah. But you know, for. But people that have smoked are like, they probably yeah, yeah. like, all right, you know, he's in, the, he, I'm moving in the right direction. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I've done, before I've quit cold turkey and like for a couple of months and uh, I'm like, ah, yeah, I, yeah. I just feel like this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now that I'm like stepping down, I'm not getting that ah, sort of right. thing. And I'm like relearning how to like, I'll, you know, drive to work and not smoke or drive home, you know, whereas mm -hmm. I would be doing that before. So I'm like yeah, kind yeah. of relearning how to do like these things or right. like eat, eat dinner and not immediately smoke afterwards, you know, right. so I'm like kind of associate. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's one of the most important things you can do for your health. So I think that's honestly my favorite uh, goal we've had so far oh, of our 18 episodes. So, thanks, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate that. It, yeah. But why don't we uh, celebrate with a little lunch? And uh, I really appreciate you coming over to 
the side of town to do the pod. All right. And uh, I think you're coming up on the Comedy Bunker soon again. Oh, all right. I, I have you on February 26th, I think. So okay. This will be out next week. So come see Dave at the Comedy Bunker February 26th. And uh, we'll have you back. Oh, uh, yeah. And follow me on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Follow him on Instagram. Build, follow the art guy and the Zips apps. Dave Waite Comedy. Yeah, Dave Waite Comedy. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you.